Hey there, my name is Neandra. Welcome to Mercy Commentary VODs where I play competitive, then talk about my plays and mistakes. This is a PTR match at around 4000 SR and my placements ended up being 4 wins, 1 loss. This match is the loss and these are my final stats. Looking back, I made a lot of mistakes this match, way more than any of my other placements. I also want to show this one because it's good to remember that high stats can be misleading, and even if your team is messy, you probably could have played better as well. Pre rounds, I always listen out for clues that tell me what the enemy team is running. Maybe it's a Junkrat trap or Doomfist using a voice line, but this time it's Symmetra turrets hitting the spawn doors. So I call it out and as the match begins I damage boost Ash, and then I fly to heal Genji after he gets hit by the turret. I probably could have left Anna to heal him and keep my damage boost on Ash because I don't want to miss her initial dynamite. I get my beam back on her in time, but I easily could have missed it. This is really minor, but maybe I should have broken the railings here. I feel they get in my way a little bit and I would have had an easier time with line of sight on allies below without them there. Our enemy returns. Should have mentioned to my team that I was going to res. One thing I mention a lot in my videos is flicking your camera view about to look for flanks. While on the bridge I didn't check my right at all and it wouldn't have hurt to. The reason I didn't is because I knew Ash was here somewhere and she'd be the main concern with flanking. Dynamite is going to land in front of me and instead of pushing up to any ally I decide to be fancy and hover above water. Then Ash responds and I'm like oh. Luckily Anna was there, another healer easily might not have been. I'm about to have my first Valkyrie, which I waste, but this one was definitely a bit slower. I used to be able to get it in roughly 40 seconds, but here it took about a minute. I used it because we got a pick, but that gets dressed as I ult, plus we have a sleeping ally who is surrounded. I also positioned in a way where I didn't see our Anna and had no clue about her health state. This fight was all around messy from us, but at least the enemy team used a few ultimates after they'd already won it. With a global decrease to ult charge, I have been a little worried for Mercy since fast charging is one of Valkyrie's key features. In placements, the decrease was somewhat noticeable if I looked out for it, but it didn't feel super bad, especially since you still get it quicker than most. The only match it felt very noticeable was for everyone on 2CP and maybe we just played badly, but that did feel horrible. On this channel, I've mentioned a few times that when Valk's coming to an end and you've won the fight, you should heal once it's over to get the ult charge, and I think with the global decrease, this is going to be super important to do. If possible, wait or coordinate with a second healer to let them have the charge. <clears throat> I end up the only person on cart, and Mercy's not a great payload pusher. She contributes way more pushed up with the DPS, trying to cause staggers, so I fly forward but don't say anything, so we spend a good few seconds with no one on cart, even though Anna's especially good on the payload because of her long ranged healing. Our team gets a lot of picks, and we stay pushed up to try for a team kill, which is fine because we want staggers, but I think we stayed around too long. Maybe Sigma was a better damage boost target than Genji, I wasn't sure. Sigma pushes up really far, and I take my beam off him to heal D.Va, who's positioned further back from damage, so that might have been a pretty big mistake. Basically, by trying to snowball them, they snowball us back. We should have fallen back after our initial picks, rather than waiting around for them to regroup and attack us at 6. Back away, back away, back away. Wait, wait. Right beside you. <laughs> Uh, give me dragon blade. Come on. Yes, I got it, I got it. Yes, nice. Since we have three picks and Genji is very speedy, I possibly could have left this res and let him respawn normally, but I didn't want to risk it. Damage is engaged. Okay, just push us. Just keep pushing, keep pushing. Let's I'm gonna eat. I tell my team they're gonna grab or shatter, use Valkyrie, and then we get hit by Slam. I've noticed I do this a lot. I call out scary ultimates I know they're about to use, Valk anyway, and then it gets wasted because I've used my ultimate against things it wasn't designed to counter. We aren't using our Sigma shield like you would Rhino or Orissa, so we don't have that layer of protection that might make Valk worth it. Get I'm taking okay. I'm a bit too hasty to res Ash, and I could have moved further behind the shield first. 
This match, I had 10 reses in 11 minutes, and I realise a lot of them are outside of fights, which carry a lot less weight and impact than a resurrect in the middle of battle. Like here, we have a pick and our Genji dies, but I can't do anything about it because I used res pre-fight. An extra body here is worth so much more than saving 20 seconds to regroup. Most of my allies are on low ground. I try to flick between high and low to be slippery, but I probably should have just stayed back and give myself distance from the rest. Enemy Genji ults and I'm positioned badly when it happens and I make it worse by flying forward as I hear it. One of our biggest issues this match is that we ran Anna Mercy against Rhine Zarya and Genji. If this were a live server match, I definitely would have communicated with our second healer and see if one of us wanted to go off healer for the defensive ult. Because this was the PTR and I felt good about my performance, I do stick on Mercy until the end. Ultimately though, our lack of defensive ult is kind of what leads us to our loss. Yeah, Our Ash asks to go high ground and no one follows, but we have an Anna who I trust, so I should follow her, right? Well, I immediately just reposition for no real reason and then lose track of her. She dies to a Genji and I probably could have prevented it if I hadn't pointlessly played in this area. Like, I probably could have attended to allies from here if needed, while still being near Ash. I don't know why she Damage increase. We lost our Ana, unfortunately. Let me get you back. I'm here. Oh, oh he's sad. This is not your time. Roll it, roll it. Come on, Grom. Don't go in. Come on, Grom. What are you doing? Our Ash has been asking to go high ground for like two fights now and no one else follows us, but time is running out. I see my allies damaged at a distance, panic, and Valk for the extended beam length plus multi-healing. I was definitely too hasty in using ult here. This is a bad habit I've got and I really want to break it. Sometimes I'm way too eager to Valk for healing when we have Mercy Anna, and a lot of the time, especially when we've got picks, we can just handle it ourselves. <laughs> Outside of that future reference for myself, I don't really have anything else to say on this last fight, like flinging myself into enemies was dumb, but that's about it. Basically, we were all very spread out and uncoordinated, and it was just a really messy fight all round. Good as new. Score. One. To zero. I'm gonna go with our Junkrat to the enemy spawn door because I thought he might want to do some quick damage then get out of there. One thing to remember is that your damage boost beam makes noise and it might not do anything pre-round. Because of this, it can be better to wait until the round has started or almost started to use damage boost if you're positioned right against the door, because you don't want to give away that you're there. Ash would be an exception though because I don't want to miss her dynamite. Five, four. I stick with Ash for damage boost since Anna can cover the rest fairly well. I don't have any fly paths behind me, so this could have been dangerous if the enemies had pushed left to deal with us, but I'm sure I could have called it out in time. I make sure to keep flicking my view to other teammates in case they need help, and use the right wall for cover. I fly to Ash, and I could have just stopped here and be safe behind the wall. For some reason, I push a little forward, I think I wanted to body block, but I could hear arrows beforehand, which would indicate who she's fighting. Because of his high burst, Hans is a very dangerous character to try and absorb damage from. Our Junkrat's gonna wander into a room and die, and there's not much I could have done about it. I don't know Sigma Diva well enough to know if I could have asked us to push up and try to make space for Rez. I don't think I had a particular reason for doing this, but I fly to our Diva and take damage along the way, even though Anna has ranged healing. Weirdly, I fly away before either of us are at full health, and keep in mind, there's a bunch of enemies behind me off screen. I'm thinking what happened is I saw a critical person and panicked, but it was Anna who can self-heal, and she does a second after I die. Plus she has that corner of safety to play from. So yeah, a few weird rush plays here. I often say if there's no beam targets around, take the pistol out. I hear Ryan charge and placing myself in the doorway was a bit dumb, but I get some nice ult charge from landing a few shots on him. <clears throat> if I wanted to use Valkyrie, I should have done it here. <laughs> Instead, I wait till we get two picks and a few allies are critical. Once again, my bad habit of popping Valkyrie for healing when me and the secondary support can handle it fine has emerged. This should be a peak performance level. Heilstrahl aktiviert. 
Our Ash is going to get picked off, and I tell my team I can res in 3 seconds, but nothing else. I hesitate because of the storm arrows flying past and go for it afterwards, staying silent. Genji then ults, and there's not much I could have done about that, so let's go back to Ash. I should have asked Sigma for a shield or try to use the cart for protection. Having Ash easily positioned for Genji ult would have been useful, like maybe she could have coach gunned him back, and that would buy us some time. Damage increase! Let me handle it! Our tanks call to push up and do so as enemy Genji attacks our Ash, and just neither of us mention it. In fact, I also push forward, leaving him in the backline while not saying a thing. Our Ash dealt with him, but still, that was really, really sloppy of me, especially since I'm such an advocate for communicating as mercy. Ah, such possibilities. Another body block against Hanzo, fine, but still gotta be careful. Friendly Diva takes a lot of damage and Valkyrie's ready, so I check the scoreboard to see Anna's ult charge. She doesn't have much, so I let her have the healing on Diva and keep my boost on her. Other allies are better damage boost targets, but if Diva does need more healing, I wanna be quick to help. I probably could have let Anna have some more of this healing, but I was worried because Genji was actively damaging Friendly Diva, plus Ryan and Zarya are very close, so we're not really out of combat anymore. <laughs> Your support has arrived. Damage increased. You needed a doctor? I go for the res, hoping my depth and the middle pillar make good enough cover. I could have res from the right bridge, but I just didn't like the idea of walking past the open to get to there. I then stayed in the bridge area for a few seconds afterwards, because again, I just, I don't want to walk across this bit. <laughs> I'm not super happy with this positioning, I think I was playing way too close to Ash and the grav was fair punishment. Using the stairs more would have provided cover, plus Junkrat would have been in my camera view more. <laughs> When we're this close to losing on defense, I tend to conserve Valkyrie more. I've held off using it for the last two fights because it has so many little components for helping Mercy out like health regeneration and longer beam length. Here, I'd rather have that when I need it, over aggressively damage boosting a fight. <laughs> Let me get you patched up. Damage increase! Support me in the right direction. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do? Using bulk against Nanoblade usually isn't worth it unless you have a lot of stuns, but we're about to lose, so I might as well anyway. Best res target here, probably Sigma, but Ash was safer, so I went for her instead. Again, I can't really complain about us losing this fight when we didn't run Zen or Lucio. Like, Valk just isn't designed to counter the numerous scary alts the enemy team brought to this match. <laughs> That. And there we go. As I said, with ult charging slower, try to heal once Valk is over if you can. Plus, communicate with the second healer you're guaranteed to have, so you guys can share healing when one of you already has ult. For this video, I asked my Discord for help because I was struggling in places to find stuff to commentate over. Many thanks to Army Thalia, Sergeant Pugs, and Life is Right for looking at the match with me. They found a lot of things, and this video would be so much worse without their help. That's all from me this week. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to check out my Patreon, and have a nice day.